Welcome to this episode of Tea Time with Taryn. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to start an art journal. If you already have an art journal, you can jump ahead, but to get started, I'm actually going to show you how to make one from scratch. If the thought of making one does not appeal to you, there are plenty of options. I would just recommend when you're getting started to go with a smaller book because it um, is a lot of work to fill larger pages. So it, of course, it's absolutely up to you. Um, if you have a lot of art experience, you might want a bigger uh, canvas to work on, but I would recommend going with something smaller and make sure uh, you choose mixed media if you plan on using anything from paints or markers or anything like that because it'll have thicker pages. Avoid sketchbooks. So to get started, I'm using some heavyweight cardstock. Um, this is only 60 pound, but you could go as heavy as you want. Um, I even recommend using watercolor paper, especially if you're doing a mixed media art journal. But if you're not, if it's just uh, for sketching, you can use computer paper. So I'm taking my eight by 11 and a half sheets of cardstock and I'm cutting them in half to about four and a quarter inches. I'm doing this with five sheets so that I end up with 10 pages. And I'm just going to go through and I'm not going to cut all the way through. I'm just going to make a little notch so that my folds are exact. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it instead of actually cutting through the paper is just really lightly glazing it. Make sure you don't cut through the paper and then it makes a really beautiful fold. So I'm going to do that with all the sheets. My guillotine doesn't do a great job, so my sheets aren't perfectly even, but they're good enough, especially since this is just a starter journal. This is going to be my cover. So what you can do is you can use a ruler and you can measure it out, but I have a scoreboard, and so I'm going to use a scoreboard to uh, do all my measuring. So I'm just measuring out the, fr the front cover, the spine, and then the back cover. I'm using some clips just to make sure that I'm getting the exact um, measurement for the spine. Once I'm satisfied that I've got the right measurements, I'm just going to go ahead and score the paper. So now I just need the height as well. And I'm actually not going to cut that bottom piece off. I'm going to use it sort of as an inside flap. So now I just need to cut that end bit off. So now it's time to assemble it. I'm using some all-purpose glue. And I'm just going to glue down the flap for starters. Now the flap isn't going to have perfect bend marks. I'm going to bend in the spine so I can make sure that the flap and the spine now are folded the same. I'm going to test it to make sure that it is the right size and it seems like it does fit perfectly. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some all-purpose glue to the spine. I'm going to go fairly heavy making sure that the fold side is down. So make sure you're not gluing your paper shut. I'm gonna use a clip to just hold it in place and I'm gonna leave it overnight to dry. So now that it's dry, what I'm going to do is actually try and break the spine. I'm going to go through and look for weak points in the book. For the most part, it should be fine, but anywhere there's a really large crack, I'm going to re-glue these sections.
you don't have to decorate your cover, but I um, did this piece and I wasn't sure if I wanted to glue it into my book or if I wanted to use it as a cover. So I decided to go ahead and I'm going to add it to my cover. I did end up using double-sided tape, but on second thought, since it's the cover, um, it would have been better for me to glue it down. You, of course, you can use anything. This is a mixed media journal. You can draw on the cover. You can cut out magazine pages, even maybe glue coloring pages to the front cover. And I mean, really uh, stamp it. You, you get as creative as you want. This is your creative space. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start the first page together. I like to get started with something, um, a background of some sort, and it just helps getting the creative juices flowing and also it's um, going to take a lot of the work out. So this is just some tissue paper. Um, other suggestions, uh, big stamps, you can even kind of squiggle or doodle on the background, newspaper um, clippings. Uh, ripped out pages from books. There's lots of different options. Even just paint the background. I like to go with something inconsistent and um, that looks kind of random. So I'm using Mod Podge and I'm just um, making a nice even layer for uh, this tissue paper. I'm putting an extra coat over everything just to seal it and make sure that it will stay in place. It's not necessary to coat it, but it's just a habit I've gotten into. I always cut my pieces too big so that I can make sure they go right to the edge of the paper and then I just trim off the excess after. So I saw somebody do a journal page that was mostly just circles and I thought that was a really cool and creative idea. And I'm thinking, you know, everybody can do circles and it's a journal page so don't feel like your circles have to be perfect. I'm definitely not going to pull out a stencil and make perfect circles. So it's just have fun and get creative with shapes and sizes. When you're getting started I would suggest going with something more contemporary, a more contemporary layout because um, really it helps you really get creative and get that uh, that side of your brain working. Once you've done all your circles you can color them. I'm going to start off with uh, some markers and I'm going to switch up my mediums as I go. So it is a mixed media journal and that's one of my favorite things about it is I'm not going to stick to one medium. It's not going to all be markers or all be stamps or all be one thing. I can mix it up and add as many different mediums as I want. This is um, ink and I'm just using a paintbrush that has a water reservoir built in. They're pretty cool and fun to play with. It takes a little bit of getting used to when you first start working with this kind of thing but obviously um, if you're not feeling brave a regular paintbrush would be just fine, but I love adding paint to my layouts. I love bright colors and I feel like my page doesn't feel complete until it's completely covered. So I just feel like sometimes I get carried away but I still love it and it's still fun and it still looks beautiful in the end. So I'm just going to paint the edges of the paper because it was just bothering me all this negative white space. Now of course I've used paints and things so I left it a few hours to dry. And then once it was dry, I grabbed a Sharpie and I'm just working over top of what I've done and just adding shapes and patterns into these, um, these little circles.
So what's fun about this tissue paper is it's got pictures on it, so I thought I would color it, add a little bit more interest to this page. One of my favorite parts about seeing other people's journals is little sayings they put inside. So I have this book of stickers that just has words and you kind of sort of create your own sayings. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put something sweet on the page so when I look at it, it will um, just make me happy. So I've chosen to, to add be yourself because that's what this journal is all about, an expression of your inner self. Another thing a lot of people like to do is date it. So when you go back and you look at your pages, you'll know when you did this page. I don't usually date my art journals. I like to do something that represents the seasons and um, kind of go year by year as opposed to day by day. But you'll figure it out and you'll discover what you like, what you don't like, and what works for you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave me comments. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed my video.